Hi, I'm Kevin Brown, the principal of Kingsley College. We want to put this video together to help you know how to clearly and carefully do your referencing, referencing the resources that you use to prepare your assessment tasks. In the Kingsley Community Handbook, there are some great examples there of how to reference and do your footnoting for books, articles, newspapers, websites, several different ways that you can draw your information. And so there's examples of how to reference those. There's also examples of how to do a bibliography. So through the video and through examples on the computer, we want to show you how to reference the books that you refer to when you draw quotes or even if you simply use a resource that might give you some ideas even if you don't quote from it we'll show you how to footnote that reference correctly i've got a copy of the kingsley community handbook open here this is where the examples for doing footnoting and bibliographies are included and so we've put into the handbook examples of most of the resources that you might need to reference. So we encourage our students to keep this document saved to your desktop, or if you want to, you could print out these two pages and have them pinned to a pin board or something like that so that you can always go back and reference. But you can see here examples of how to reference a book, a encyclopedia, a newspaper, a magazine article, and a website, and even, although they're not used too much now, electronic resources like CDs or DVDs. There's also examples of how then to include your reference in a bibliography. So we're going to go through how to do this shortly, but this is where to look in your Kingsley Handbook. So again, we've got those same examples laid out, but in the style of a bibliography. So let's go on now and we'll have a look at how to create and save and record correctly a footnote and then a bibliography. We've got an example here in a Word document of how to insert a footnote and this is the main skill that I'd like you to learn. We get lots of questions at orientation from students of how to, how to correctly insert a footnote and so I'd like to take you through step by step of how to do that but you'll also have this video to go back to if you need to check because then as students progress in their studies sometimes they are unsure or can't remember exactly what to do so this is a good place to come back to. So I've said here in this Word document simply writing away you know you could be typing a Word document and want to use a quote from a book or a website or you might simply want to allude to something you saw in a resource. Well, you do need to reference that as well. If there's an idea that you've pulled from somewhere else, then you need to acknowledge where that came from. Even if you don't mention the source in your writing, you need to acknowledge it with a footnote. So I've said here that you might be writing all the way. And then, for example, in this excellent text, Lead Like Wesley, Mark Gorvet said that, and this is then the quote, Wesley made high demands on his leaders. Those who lead or led one or more class meeting each week were also to meet every Tuesday night with their direct supervisor for accountability and training. Where you close the quote with your inverted commas and then at the top of the page, you can click on references and insert footnote. So I've done that here and it puts a little number one and down the bottom of the page, it rules a line and puts the little number one there ready for you to insert the footnote. So Word does a lot of the work for you. But this is where I'd like you to learn the skill of inserting a footnote because you include the first name first. So in this case, it's Mark Gorvet. You put a comma and then you put the title of the book and you put it in italics. So if you want to italicize a word or words, you can highlight them and go up to, to home and there's the I there for italicizing a word, or in this case, a title. 
So in brackets, there's no comma after the title, but in brackets, then you put the city, the publisher, comma, and the date. You don't need to put the state. So in this case, it's Indianapolis, colon, Wesleyan Publishing House, comma, 2016, close your brackets, put a comma, and your page number, full stop. That's it. So if you're unsure, then look back to the examples in the Kingsley Community Handbook. But I want to show you something else that I do. Whenever I insert a footnote, I immediately copy it and I scroll down in my document to start a new page. So in this case, we'll just go down to start a new page and I give it a heading, bibliography. and paste in what was a footnote, but we're going to turn it now into a bibliography reference. So the bibliography is a separate page that you include as the last page in your document. But if you start your bibliography as you're working through and writing, then half your work's done. What is different about a bibliography compared to a footnote is that you use the surname first. We can put the first name after the surname. This is always left in your document, not centered. But so we've got Gorvet, comma, mark, full stop. And then the title of the book in italics, Lead Like Wesley. The other thing we do in this case is get rid of the brackets. And so we'll get rid of our, put a full stop after the title, get rid of the brackets and have a full stop after the date. So for a, a bibliography, it is a tiny little bit different. You get rid of your brackets, you don't need a page number, and you put the surname first. The reason you do that is because then you keep in order, in alphabetical order in your bibliography, all of your references that you've sourced. So that's how to include a fairly simple book in a footnote and a bibliography. This is just with one author, without an editor. If there's two authors, then you add both names. Say if this was Mark Gorvet and um, Kenneth Collins, then you would say that, Mark Gorvet and Kenneth Collins, comma, and the, then the rest of the details. In the bibliography, you would have Gorvet, comma, Mark and Kenneth Collins, whatever the second author's name was. If it's an editor, I'll show you just if Mark Gorvet was an editor, you would include it like this. You would put ed, full stop, so comma, but the computer has automatically made a capital E. We'll see if we can get rid of the capital E and make it a small e to show that this is an editor. If Mark Gorvet was the editor of the book, it'd be Gorvet, comma, Mark, full stop, ed, full stop, comma, and then the title of the book. So he's not the editor, so we will delete the editor details and simply leave him as Mark Gorvet. Well, let's go on now and have a look at how to footnote a website. Well, we've looked at how to insert a reference to a book, a simple book with one author, but it we can add a second author if we need to, or an editor. But let's have a look now at how to reference a website. So I've written here, we continue to write and then reference, refer to a website. So if you're writing your task, typing away, you put a full stop at the end of your sentence, and then you need to insert a footnote. So you go to references, insert footnote, and puts the little footnote number down the bottom. So in this case, we're going to choose an example from an online site, the Wesley Centre Online. 
This is an excellent resource if you are studying Wesleyan theology or Wesleyan history, doctorate of holiness, something like that. It's got some got Wesley's works, they're his journals and letters and sermons. But there's also other Wesleyan scholars on here. But for now, let's have a look at this sermon, The Almost Christian, just as an example. The original text was titled The Sermons of John Wesley. So what we'll do in our footnote is we will put John Wesley's name, put a comma. In this case, we're going to include the title of the sermon and we'll put that in inverted commas, so the almost Christian. And the title of the book was The Sermons of John Wesley. So we will put that in italics because it's a title. And then we're going to include the URL. So the URL is the, the website, the web address. And with a website, often you don't have page numbers. With a sermon, you've, we have got some numbers for paragraph numbers, but generally in a website, you don't have page numbers. So what we ask you to do is to include the paragraph number. So if we were referring to, say, paragraph one, we would put P-A-R, full stop, para, one, full stop, to show that your idea or your quote was drawn from paragraph one. And in that way, we've acknowledged that we found this sermon on a website. It wasn't from a textbook. We've given the title of the book, The Sermons of John Wesley, in italics, the title of the sermon, Perhaps it's an article that we might have found on a website that we would then put in inverted commas. But basically with a website, you put as much detail as you can find. You insert the URL and tell us which paragraph number you drew from, because this is the way that if anyone else reads your work or if you go back to it, you can check and find your resources. As I said earlier, we encourage you straight away then to paste your footnote detail into the bibliography and I've done that here and put Wesley first, the surname first, following Gorbett because we're putting the author's names alphabetically. So that's about it. That's how you insert a acknowledge a website, reference to a website into your pages. Let's say for example that you continue to write in your task and you want to reference a quote or an idea from Mark Gorvet's book again, you know, the previous book that you've used. So you're continuing to write and you want to add a subsequent text. So you put a full stop for the end of your sentence so that you're writing. You go to references to insert footnote and in this case, we've got, we've used Gorvet, and to record a subsequent reference, all you need to do is to include the author's surname, the title of the book in italics, and the page number that you're referring to. So in this case, we've got Gorvet, comma, lead like Wesley. You put a comma. This doesn't have to be in italics because you're going to insert a page number. So this might be page 23. Add page 23 and put a full stop. Well, Mark Gorvet's text is already in your bibliography. You don't need to include it there again. But if you were to reference a key text, maybe it's a assigned textbook, and you might refer to it three or four or five times. Well, each time you can now simply add the surname and the title of the text and the page number. We've looked at how to insert a footnote on Microsoft Word, but not everyone's using Microsoft. Lots of people are using Apple products. And so on a Mac, you can also insert a footnote. It's basically the same. You go to, at the end of your sentence, if you're writing away, you put your full stop, and then you go to insert footnote. 
It does the same thing. It puts a little number there for a footnote number and down the bottom of the page, it includes the same number at where you can insert your footnote detail. So if you weren't sure of how to use the little insert icon at the top of the page, you can go to the drop down box and click insert and there you'll find insert footnote as well as the other way to insert a footnote into pages. If you're using a Mac, then at the college we would prefer if you submit your tasks as a Word document. It's something that we can save to your student file, we can reply and give you feedback on the cover sheet, and so with your document you will insert the cover sheet as page one of your document, and then you will export from pages into a Word document and save your document that way so that you can email it as an attachment. So the way you export from pages into Word is to, you go to File and you go to Export To and you go to List There, including Word. So in this case, we can click on Converting from Pages to a Word document. We can click on Export and there you are, it's saved as a Word document that you can now send into the college for assessment. Well, thanks for watching the video. If you need to watch it again, that'll help you to clarify any questions, but if you still have more, don't hesitate to email me at kingsley at kingsley.edu.au or you can find further information on the Kingsley Australia website, which is kingsley.edu.au. Thank you.